here are the 10 greatest engines from the past decade. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And today we're looking at our favorite engines from the last 10 years. And yes, we titled this video, The Greatest Engines. And that doesn't mean the most powerful or the most reliable or the most expensive or the cheapest for that matter. It's just a list of engines that have left their mark on us in the last decade. Well, I mean, not the way a certain engine usually leaves its mark on you, Thomas. Ow. <laughs> no, no, these are engines that are, are special to us. And this list includes engines from cars that were still in production from 2010 until now. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. Number 10, the twin turbo V6 from the Kia Stinger. Yep, okay, it's a Kia, and there's some bigger ones coming on this list, but we thought we'd start with an engine that's a bit of an underdog. This is a motor that kind of redefined a brand for us. Yeah, or brands. It's the Hyundai Lambda 2 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 that comes in the Kia Stinger and the Genesis G70. And this is a modular engine used in a lot of Hyundai and Kia products. But this version of it really grabbed everyone's attention. It's smooth, it's refined in an almost, dare I say it, German way. And it got some very impressive tech, including sodium filled exhaust valves to keep them cool and prevent pre-ignition. And it's powerful, 365 horsepower and 376 pound-feet of torque. And since it's twin turbo, a lot of that torque is available really low down in the rev range. It's not the best sounding and it's not the most amazing engine, but it's one that really showed us that Hyundai Genesis Kia actually has some serious game. Number nine, the BMW S85 V10 from the E60 M5 and M6. Okay, here is an engine that is the very definition of a double-edged sword. Just the fact that it's a 500 horsepower V10 engine that screams to 8,250 RPM in a four-door sedan and can sound like this. It's a legendary engine, but it chews through rod bearings faster than James chews through Alpha Betty spaghetti. What? They're delicious and educational. And while it does have 10 individual throttle bodies, which is awesome, the actuators for them like to fail, among a whole bunch of other very expensive parts. Great engine, not reliable. So before you be a silly billy and comment that, oh yeah, it's really great, great at being crap, we said it first, all right? So, you know, you, you, you can't persuade us. We already said it, we know. Number eight, the Mercedes AMG 53 engine. All right, let's lay it out. An inline six can be excellent. And it's great to see Mercedes making one again. An electrically driven supercharger is great. A 48 volt mild hybrid electric system is great. But when you mash them all together, you expect it to become a lumpy experience with power coming from all sides and it being over-engineered. <laughs> Polestar one. But the reality is so, so different. What Mercedes did was take an engine that was full of tech and complexity and make it feel pure and simple. The same simplicity that caused mine and Thomas's love of naturally aspirated engines. The lack of assistance from something like a turbocharger or a supercharger creates, for lack of a better word, a natural and linear feeling of power. One that builds as you go up in the rev range. It makes you want to rev it out. <laughs> what? This car is... Ultimately, it's more engaging. So you get all the benefits of a, a smooth stop start and the effortless characteristics of a high tech filled engine like that. But then it pulls hard to the red line. It makes a great noise. Oh. 
and it's all the power you would ever need. And yes, a special mention goes to the 63 engine, which is incredible in its own nuts way. But the 53 engine for us, it just feels like it's moving the game forward and in such a great way. Number seven, the Ferrari 458 engine. Okay, so the engine in the 458 was peak for what Ferrari did in the world of naturally aspirated V8s. Yes, there were more powerful versions of it down the line, but this engine was and is sensational. Nine thousand RPM, five hundred and sixty-two horsepower, flat plane crank, dry sump lubrication, direct injection, and an absolutely angelic noise. Obviously, the turbocharged versions of the V8 in the 488 and its particular versions are objectively superior, but it's hard to beat just atmosphere, explosions, and noise. Also, and this doesn't get brought up enough, it's a beautiful piece of engineering. Just look at it. Number six, the 4.0 flat six from the Porsche GT3. The flat six is really what Porsche is all about. Horizontally opposed engines have a distinct sound. And while a flat four is kind of cool, a flat six adds a whole new layer of symphony. The engine in the 991.1 GT3, while still incredible, had a few minor issues. Yeah. It caught fire. Yeah, it did do that. And there was a metallurgical issue that caused the engine to misfire at high RPMs. You know, the part of the rev range that you bought the car for. But in the 991.2 GT3, you get a detuned version of what is essentially an endurance racing power plant. So you get to enjoy all 9,000 RPM of what is arguably one of the most amazing engines in any car ever. The first time you wail past 8,000 RPM in one of these, and experience how exquisite the power band is, you'll be hooked on Porsche forever. And I can say that because here's us experiencing it for the first time. The damping is unbelievable. Like these are not smooth roads, but it just it's just so good. It's just like, I'm just so saying, I like, I'm like, <laughs> shut up, Thomas. <laughs> There's a natural That's aspiration. <laughs> oh, I'll oh, say it again. Number five, the supercharged 6.2 liter Hemi V8. This is the 6.2 liter supercharged V8 that can be found in the Challenger and the Charger and the Trackhawk. Clearly Fiat Chrysler likes it. And so do we. Woo. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> 797 horsepower in the Hellcat Red Eye and 808 horsepower in the Demon. Jason, why is that? It's actually the same engine, but it has a deviated septum and it can't breathe in 808 horsepower worth of air. Thanks, Jason. And that's because the Demon has the biggest hood scoop fitted to any car ever. And whether you're enjoying this car in the Hellcat, the Hellcat Red Eye, the Demon, the Trackhawk, you get to enjoy a maniacal supercharger screen. That's because it has the biggest supercharger fitted to any production car ever. And that brings with it absolutely ridiculous levels of power. Number four, the Voodoo V8 from the GT350. When it comes to a lineup of engines, the current gen Mustangs have some incredible choices. We've said many times that the Coyote engine, the one found in the Mustang GT, is fantastic. But here in this list, we want to give praise to the Voodoo V8. Before we go any further, we need to describe the difference between the Voodoo engine and a lot of other American V8s. See, most V8s come with a cross-plane crankshaft. That results in exhaust pulses that are uneven, which gives it kind of that characteristic American throaty rumble. 
Voodoo V8 in the GT350 and the GT350R has a flat plane crankshaft. That means that the exhaust pulses are equidistant and it's part of an engineering design that allows for a very high revving, 8,250 RPM, naturally aspirated marvel that puts out 526 horsepower. <laughs> with long gearing, you get a car that feels like it can rev to the moon. But even though it has a flat plane crankshaft like a Ferrari, it doesn't have the same scream that a Ferrari does. It has a different exhaust design, which means that it kind of has that rugged American bellow. Please enjoy your GT350 responsibly. Oil consumption issues may apply. Number three, the Lamborghini V10. Or is it an Audi V10? We've been shot down for saying it either way. What we do know, however, is that whether it has four rings on it or a raging bull, it's sublime. <laughs> Some people don't like the sound of a V10. Incidentally, those are also probably the same people that eat pizza with a knife and a fork. The V12 in the Aventador is also an insane engine. But the incredibly characteristic sound of the V10 has always captured our imagination, like it did when we first saw this Audi commercial back in the day. And from that moment on, it found itself on the bucket list. And thanks to you guys supporting myself and Thomas, we actually got to experience it time and time again. So thank you. This is also one of those engines that changes characteristics as you rev it out. Once you go past 5,000 RPM, it kind of transforms into this insane wild beast thingy. It's almost frightening, in a good way. Now, to be number two on our list is no small feat. So who better to explain it than YouTube's international treasure, Jason from Engineering Explained. Hello everyone and welcome to my garage where we're going to be talking about one of the most powerful, one of the most impressive, dare I say the perfect 2 liter engine, 600 horsepower, 600 newton meters of torque, which means we're definitely not talking about my Crosstrek, which has just one fourth of that. The Tiny Friendly Giant is a 2 liter inline 3 cylinder engine used in the Koenigsegg Gamera. It is twin turbocharged, yes, with just three cylinders, what? And it implements Koenigsegg's free valve system, which means no camshafts. Because free valve uses electro-hydraulic pneumatic actuators to open the intake and exhaust valves, it has complete control over when the intake and exhaust valves open, how much the intake and exhaust valves open, and for how long the intake and exhaust valves remain open. Theoretically, it can run as a two-stroke up to 3,000 RPM. It pushes the boundaries of what we thought was possible in a car, just like my Crosstrek. See, turns out when we aren't in the room, the lesson goes smoother. This is a dinosaur. Thank you, Jason, for everything you do and for putting up with us. Number one, the One LR. G-U-E. Yeah, that's the, that's the V10 from the Lexus LFA. Call it rarity, call it uniqueness, call it whatever you want. The engine in the LFA is a sensation. Just, just listen.
553 brake horsepower. It's made from magnesium, titanium, aluminium, which means that it's light and it has dry sump lubrication, so the engine can remain low in the car and sustain high Gs. It has incredibly low mass, low friction internals, so it can rev from idle to 9,000 RPM in six tenths of a second. And past 3,000 RPM, the exhaust gases are routed around the deadening chambers, which gives it that legendary scream. And if you didn't already love it enough, the chief LFA design engineer, Haruhiko Tanahashi, once said, what we needed and what we created was a car that moved the driver in more ways than one. And according to him, it's a car that stirred all of the senses. So, thank you for watching. Obviously there's a lot of other engines that we didn't put on this list, and things that made our shortlist were the V12 and the A12 Superfast, the W16 Quad Turbo and the Chiron, and some amazing Honda engines. So if you have any favorites, leave them in the comments. Now, I'm going to go check on James, because because I'm worried about him. <laughs> I wrote a naughty word. Oh no, it just says pens. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> Thank, thanks for watching, and, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get back in cars soon, right? Soon. Soon enough.